good. Oh, actually, you sound better. Better reception. Hope it stays. Um, I was saying earlier that Holy Week, um, I don't know how the Zoom platform uh, uh, apportions, but if you think about noontime on Good Friday, um, yesterday we may have been one of many, many, many churches doing something on Zoom. And that may be true yeah. Sunday morning as well as more and more churches sign on. Not just churches, because of course uh, all my work meetings are on Zoom and everybody else is on Zoom and everybody's family get together is on Zoom, but there may be a greater number of churches doing Zoom this weekend. Yeah. It's funny how it keeps popping up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Anybody else out of groceries? No? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Well, I started eating solid foods this week. Oh. So I've been scrambling for my impair on like my imperishable items. And I've been looking for mm -hmm. what we can make. Great. Oh we'll yeah. Get, we'll get run probably after I bought I bought four boxes of family sized Cheerios before this all started and uh, that's held me in good stead. Maybe Apollo too could enjoy the Cheerios. Oh yeah, yeah. Great too, you won't you won't choke on them. Does anybody um, have any uh, thanks uh, Easter meal that they make every single year that they're either not able to make this year or choosing not to, choosing not to or you're just going for it anyway? <laughs> uh, my daughter cooks. <laughs> I can't wait to say that. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. I fend for myself. <laughs> Well, I'm, we're hoping to have a, uh, a drop-off dinner with uh, our two sons. I'm making lamb and a couple of other things, and we'll rotate and leave it on the porch and, uh, and then have a Zoom call. Yeah, we have family in, that live in Atlanta, and we see them sitting in the front porch and on the edge of the sidewalk, you know, having a picnic at, you know, a good 10 feet distance. Uh, yeah. hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Rod, who, Rod, am I, do you know who's leading today? Just, I can't remember. Is it me? Judy. Oh, wonderful. No. <laughs> I'm having trouble hearing. <laughs> There's a lot of background. Did you yeah, a lot of, lot of reverberation. Yeah. yeah. A lot of background stuff going on. Alan, quit playing your guitar. Yeah, right. <laughs> Don't blame me for this. Don't blame me for this. No. I was uh, reading something else following up on the on the discussion about forgiveness yesterday and came across something that I thought was uh, uh, very wise. And, and the advice was, when you pray in the morning, forgive everything. Pay the amnesty for everybody. And don't be specific. <laughs> because if you're specific about, oh, and I forgive Joe for X, then you go down that rabbit hole. Just forgive everybody for everything. And then during the day, if you if something pops up, you say, well, oh, wait, I've already forgiven that. <laughs> Just as a as a technique, I thought that was pretty good. It's hard to, yeah. General oh, jump into this. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. Um, I think we need a prayer for Um Lord, just thank you for this day. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for the technology, even though it's not perfect. It's pretty amazing that we can still all be together to do this. Um, help us in our discussion today to hear and, and think about the things that you want us to think about. Um, there's a lot here, so we're not going to get to it all, but help us to focus on what's important to you for each of us in this moment. And we just thank you again and pray for help. Amen. So today we are talking about the end of the Lord's Prayer, and in the materials it's translated, don't bring us into the great trial, but rescue us from evil. Traditionally, the translation is, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yep. And the lead us not into temptation part is really, I think, confusing because we're told very clearly by James that God cannot be tempted and he never tempts anyone. So why would Jesus tell us to pray, lead us not into temptation? Why would we be asking God to lead us, to not lead us into temptation? So starting with that, um, Another way of translating temptation, it can also have the meaning of testing. Um, when we think about Jesus being led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, he was also tested. Um, that's another way of looking at that word temptation. So, but... <laughs> An issue with that is we don't want to say to God, don't let me be tested by anything. Because we also know that God uses testing to strengthen our faith. James also says in the very, very beginning, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So we also don't want to be praying, don't lead us into any testing, okay? So we'll start off with that as just as basic. Um, and then I'll go back to the materials, sort of as the way they're written. Um, it starts off with a paragraph saying, would, have you ever noticed that when you're trying to do something positive and good for the kingdom, you meet with resistance? Uh, bad things start to happen. And so we immediately say, ah, sometimes we say we must be doing something right because the devil's resisting us and he's acting up and trying to stop whatever we're doing. Um, that's one reason we're met with that. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus warns Peter, James, and John to watch and pray so that you may not come into Matthew, my version says temptation. The Greek word is pirasmos, if I'm saying it correctly, which also can be translated the testing. Um, and he's asked, he's, Jesus is asking them to pray against or to be delivered from a great time of tribulation, which is the time he's about to face, Jesus himself is about to face. Um, Jesus urges them to be alert and prayerful for deliverance from evil schemes of the evil one. Um, this pattern of prayer is important for us even now. Um, it was important for that specific time, for that specific event. But why is it important to us now? I'll just throw that out there for now. Why should we continue to pray this? Well, we are in a period of testing. Um, I've been thinking of it, you know, on the social level. To say, um, you know, as I'm talking about how sweet these kids are and the, 
said that the cousin from Puerto Rico, I don't have the phone number of that family. Um, so thinking about what would I want to have if I knew that I might, you know, like on a social level, I would want to have phone numbers of people who are important to me. Um, this was actually a family where I believe the phone number changed because at one point I thought I had that phone number. But on a social level, like, um, do we have everybody else's, you know, are there networks that are strong enough to stay in touch with everyone when we can't see them in our normal, um, you know, do we have ways of making sure the food gets to everybody? Um, so sort of on a social level, we're being tested to say, do we have systems in place for disaster? Um, and so to the, you know, lead me not into temptation. It's like lead me into something positive. Lead me into um, praying to God. Lead me into, um, you know, like positive things that I know how to build up this, you know, how to build up the systems and relationships that I need at all times. So I'm just sort of like, obviously I'm thinking about a lot of things um, to say, you know, what would I wish I had done to be ready for this? Or what would I want to be ready for the next time something happens? Mm -hmm. And so that prayer has some relevance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And maybe I'm going a little afield from it, but no. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's part of it. You know, praying not only to be delivered from something, but what's an answer? You know, what, what's the solution? What can we, yeah. what's a positive yeah. we can try yeah. to pray for as well? We're yeah. looking for answers. Yeah. But the word testing definitely resonates with what we're going through. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would call this a time of tribulation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good yeah. word. Yeah. 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 Um, no, right. I'm well, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, Jen, maybe one helpful, helpful option if there's consistent feedback is to go through each person's channel and mute them. And sure. Just, just, okay. I don't know if that will work. But yeah, I'm going to try that. I did a minute ago. So you can unmute yourself when you talk. I haven't really done much preparation for this. We all push mute. I haven't thought about these terms in a long time, actually, but they are confusing. You know, and I well, and I'm a pastor, and I have like alliterations, and you know the four T's that you see here, the the temptation, you know, the, the way that they often break these down is temptation mm -hmm. and testing, and trials, and how do we mm -hmm. think about all of these, and then tribute, and then you add in tribulation to that. How do these all work together? Um, I don't know if this is actually. Uh, either both true or clear, but uh, as I'm processing it in my mind, would it make sense that the trial in front of us is is COVID-19? Um, that the temptation we face is fear um, in, in one form or another, at least that could be a, a temptation. Um, uh, the test is to walk by faith, right? The testing in this in this situation is to walk by faith and not by sight. And and to me, I think tribulation is sort of the long-term effects of COVID-19, sort of like, you know, the trial and then, and then what that trial brings, its effects, its tribulation, right? Um, I, I could be making that up, but um, does that sound clear or helpful to anybody else? Or, or, or I'm interested how other people think of the differences between, you know, what, it, what a temptation is and what a trial is and a test. <laughs> Or does that does that work? <laughs> it does make sense. And we lost Carol and Rod. I assume they'll be back. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I always wondered if it was sort of like, Lord, please help me not to fail. That's sort of like, you know, Lord, please help me to pass the driving test, you know, help me not fail that, that test, help me not fail the tests that are coming, knowing, assuming that there are tests and that tests actually, you know, can help grow a person rather than just be something to cut them down. So just please help me not to fail this one. Yeah, which is like the test of life, right? You wake up every morning, Lord, please don't let, <laughs> let, let help me get through this day. And we often sometimes stumble our way all the way to the bed, you know, that that, that night. But uh, the Lord, the Lord is faithful. It sounds like we're a little clearer, at least. 
Although everybody's Alan. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I can't, um, uh, Jen, you have everybody muted, I think. You're muted, uh, Judy's muted. It's me and Alan. Alan, can you hear me? I'm, do you all see the sign that said unmute now? All right, you're there, you're there. Um, and Rudy, you're good. Uh, Jen, you're still oh, muted, you know. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just mute everybody on just? I had muted everyone while you were talking and then unmuting. Um, I, th I think Alan's phone is a little bit problematic, uh, but I can't, unlike us, he can't unmute himself. So I'm just muting and unmuting him. Okay. Yeah. All right, that works. What? <laughs> Alan, what? I muted you for a minute, but you're unmuted. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You're causing problems, Alan. All right. Well, I already knew that. Yep, not a problem. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, if maybe somebody has any like radio or television on, maybe they could turn that off. Linda, uh, you know, Linda, sense her love. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think. It's too hard. Wait, you talked about a tribulation. I think right now we're, we're in the tribulation because of the virus. We don't know what to do. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like we just have to go through this. I think about this in the old time, Testament, about mm -hmm. the plague, when they went through the plague. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah. I think right now we're going through that plague. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But we are going to come out on it, but we don't know when. Even a great leader doesn't know when. He wants to stop the, he wants to stop the economy now, but why take a chance right now? Yeah. Nah, we just going to have to go through that. Yep, absolutely. Whether we like it or not. Yep. yep. Because I, because I, I was being a little selfish to my boss today. Oh, you didn't mess it up my baseball season. But right now, life is more important than sports. We got to get through that. Because we're losing a lot of people. Yes. And that, that woke me up to reality. Yep. Life, life is more than sports or making money. Yep. And, that, and I've been taught. I've been humble all the way through this. And I thank God he broke me down for that. I say more than sports and money. Well, People so are more important than anything else in the world. And I never thought I would say this in my life. So Yeah, yeah is, sports is yeah, not important. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. we'll quote you on that for the rest of your life. <laughs> Especially when uh, the Red Sox please, get in please. the World Series. Yeah, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> and we're all rooting. We'll remind you. Yeah. Alan, um, I, got some, I got a text message this morning from um, Pastor Lorraine Anderson um, informing me that the South End uh, has the highest cases of coronavirus currently. We saw that too. So uh, don't go anywhere. If you need anything, just ask somebody and they'll bring it to you. Is that sound okay? Yeah. No esplanade for you, my man. Mm -hmm. It only makes wow. sense because of the concentration of people that we have here. Plus, you know, so it, I don't think, I mean, true, but it shouldn't be like over alarming, like something. You know, unusual is here. It's the collection of people that we have. Somebody was also commenting that the their discrepancies on the uh, I think they lumped in Chinatown and South End, and as, as they lumped the zip codes together as as and right. that particular graphic representing the South End. Somebody yep. somebody mentioned anyway. Yeah. 
but it's yeah. it's pretty high co high concentration due to the density of our neighborhood. So so just please be safe. Do you have a mask, Alan? Do you own a mask? Yes, I, I got five of them. <laughs> okay, good. Wear them all at once, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Carol, thank you so much for the masks. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So we, uh, our, our computer shut down a few minutes ago, so we disappeared. So I have no idea what's been going on for the last few minutes. Small revival. President. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> something else to pray for, right? Oh, boy. Um, I don't even know where to pick this up. Um, hmm. Bryce gave a kind of a rundown on trials and temptations and... Uh, I was trying to categorize these. Okay. For that. Uh, maybe, maybe, a, maybe a little bit. Just, um, just trying to think about our current situation in these themes. Like, how would we, you know, for the next half an hour, apply this part of the prayer to our current situation? You know, thinking of, you know, potentially like the the trial or the crisis that faces us. This this COVID nineteen is to me is is the trial is the crisis and. And the temptation for us in this time is to, you know, get control back to, you know, um, to feel like our futures in our bank accounts or our, you know, whatever the case may be to take control. The temptation is fear. Right. And yeah. and the test for those uh, who follow Jesus is to walk with him through this. Who, mm -hmm. He promises to walk with us if we walk with him. Right. So we the, the test is to walk by faith. Um, um, no matter what we, we see and face and hear. Um, and so, yeah, I, and we were trying to categorize tribulation. You know, Alan's describing right now as a tribulation. I read this interesting article uh, uh, describing using the metaphor of this current situation as a blizzard, right? That, that we're, we're undergoing this blizzard, but the real tribulation will come after the blizzard. Like there's a, there's a potential long winter, mm -hmm. right? however long this is going to take. And that, that period, that extended period of us not having the normal reconnection, us being together, you know, blessed be the tie that binds. That is to me, one of the great tribulations that's, that's, uh, that we're approaching, you know? Um, so anyway, we're just, this is, I, there's no Bible verses that clearly lay this out, but we're just trying to categorize these things so that when they come, we know how to identify them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, the, yeah, the idea of control, I mean, I just, I've been reading a lot lately about how this virus has just brought us all to the realization that we have no control over anything. <laughs> and we think we have control and it's really an illusion. Mm -hmm. And one of the paragraphs in the notes or uh, in this lesson today, the second page, um, when it says, when we lose sight of evil forces at work in the world, we may become overly confident in our own abilities to control certain situations or naively assume we are strong enough to face any battle, mm -hmm. um, which to me is like, that's the reason for prayer. I mean, and that's the reminder that we, we can't do any of this on our own. And if we think we can, and part of the deliver us from evil, from temptation, from um, tribulation, from all those things is, is also to deliver us from ourselves. The message line, the line from the message from the prayer is, Deliver us, um, keep us safe from ourselves and the devil, which I think is perfect. It's like, okay, <laughs> it really is. We are sometimes our own worst enemy. Um, and if we don't acknowledge that and our, our weakness before God, then we're in trouble. Um, so it's constantly coming back to surrender and saying God's in control, not us. Um, just a thought. Mm -hmm. hmm. One, one thing I read was that um, basically you could sum up that this is a prayer that God bring one safely through testing rather than deliver one from experiencing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Very appropriate to our times, as you mentioned. We're not, uh, just, uh, you know, has purposes in testing, but uh, yeah. the prayer is to bring us safely through testing. Yeah. And one of the lines that, Bryce, this came from you. I was going back in my notes from when you did preached on the Lord's Prayer. I actually wrote notes in my Bible. And one of the things you said at the end was deliver us to believe 
that evil is crushed. Mm. So just believing that God did defeat evil, even though evil continues to act out and revolt and rebel and you know clearly has influence, evil has been defeated. And to just believe that gives us courage, I think. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I'd forgotten you said that until I went back and looked in my notes. Well, so had I. So thanks so much. <laughs> I, I thought that was good. Uh, I, you know, you need to preach the, the gospel to yourself. Uh, I think is a really important uh, lesson here. You know, of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, our identity, who we are in Christ. You know, it's sort of like we can be shelter in place because we're sheltered in Christ. We can get through anything. We can, you know, uh, what is the first, uh, the Philippians 4. I, I can stay home through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> um, I, we, you know, that's, that's in any and all circumstances. I love that passage because it's really the commitment and letting go of control and saying no matter what the situation holds, I could be, I have a lot in any moment and not get to my head. I could have nothing and it not get to my heart, you know, and uh, I could do through Christ. It's really powerful. But yes, yeah, like Rudy said, it's through it. It's, it's through Christ in these situations. Yeah. Are we doing on time? We're half, okay. Um, hmm. I'm curious how people def like define temptation. Like what 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 is a temptation? Hmm. Um, or J James says each of us is tempted when you're dragged away by your own evil desires and enticed. So <laughs> I thought that was, <laughs> it kind of comes from inside of us, not just always from outside. Well, that's what you were saying earlier, right? That temptation, yeah. you know, in one sense is the, the candy bar sitting on the, on the edge, you know, and we're like, that is the temptation, but it's what's happening inside of us is the actual temptation that, right? right. That we're, the candy bar doesn't have any power in and of itself. It's what we, our relationship to it. <laughs> other people could care less about a candy bar. I, on the other hand, would have a problem. <laughs> right, right. That's why, that's why um, you know, Paul, in his letter, even to the Corinthians, and this is like the, the first churches, they're like, you know, some of you can handle your, your alcohol and some of you cannot, right? right? Right. And so be conscious of that, be aware of that, and, and um, don't leave your, your brother into temptation who's near you, right? And be, you know, so it's interesting. Yeah. It, even what's going on now, somebody, I think, I don't know where I read this, but people have different reactions to what we're going through. And for some people, it's a break. And it's a time to sort of take a breath and come back and sit down and not have to do anything. And it's not such a terrible, terrible thing. And then there's another level at which people are pretty anxious. And then there's like extremes where people are really freaking out. I mean, they're having an extremely difficult time physically, mentally, emotionally. They're starving. They don't have any money. They're, they're having mental breakdown. I mean, there's a whole range of what's going on here. And it's okay not to feel bad if you're one of the people that's saying, well, this isn't the worst thing that could happen to me right now, but to also just be caring and sort of, what's the word, um, empathetic toward people who aren't feeling like you, who have a much more difficult time. And how can we help those people? You know, if I'm not having such a bad time, what can I do for somebody who's, who needs more? And, and how can people who need more learn to ask? I mean, it's something else I think we're all learning to do is ask for help when we're not used to it. Mm -hmm. um, we don't like asking for help. We don't like being dependent, but a lot of people need it now. Yeah, yeah, all of us in different ways need help in some form or another. I think that's the beautiful thing. Yeah. That we all we all need each other. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Hmm. Um, because hmm. right now we're really vulnerable. We do need help. But a lot of people don't want to ask for help. But right now in this situation, we're very, very vulnerable. Yeah, vulnerable, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah, without a doubt, we all are. 
Are you good? Yeah. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Yep. Dad, you're being very quiet today. You <laughs> did Yeah, here you guys are. If it would help. Hmm? Now you can tell. No, I'm, I just say I'm absorbing all this wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> we need yeah. your wisdom too. Hey, yeah. Uh, I put the mute on just to make the sound come better. Oh, did that help? Not, well, it seemed to, but it's okay right now. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's not as bad as it was. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I don't know what, yeah, what causes it. Yeah. Yeah, I see my neighbor. I was just looking out. I see my neighbor is out front um, coming home. Um, your neighbor who works in healthcare, there's like just like a lot of situations um, of people who have harder road ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, I wouldn't, you know, like, um, you know, like if you see me on Facebook, like a lot of times I'll, put, I'll post, oh, you know, you know, I just embroidered this or I just did this or I'm working on this. And then, you know, I say, okay, now like, you know, like take it down a notch because not everyone actually, there's a lot of cute social media posts around, oh, I was going to do all this home improvement and crafting, but all I do is sit around and watch TV. And so people are feeling bad about themselves that they, they don't have, you know, they did social media, the Pinterest worthy. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's trivial, but um, yeah. no. you know, like when you, um, I'm dealing with actually a uh, um, situation, I can't really put it out in public because there's somebody else's confidentiality, but somebody else who's in a tough situation that yeah. say, like, oh yeah, you know, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And, it, you know, all those ranges of situations of people who are dealing with different experiences. So I think temptation is, you know, humility. I'm not sure how much this issue fits exactly into the question of temptation, lead us not into temptation, but, you know, like a whole nother level of humility of, um, you know, like empathy, which is what you just said, but I'm, you know, just kind of repeating it. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, um, also a friend who had a bit of a meltdown and was, um, you know, when I reached out to somebody I hadn't seen in a while, instead of saying, oh, good to hear from you. It's like, oh, you're, you know, she, she reacted angrily. And I think just a, a level of depression to say, oh, you must be bored to reach out to me now. Like, what? <laughs> Oh boy. Mm -hmm. you, have, you always have friends, you know, we all have friends and I think it's okay. You know, we have friends who have been friends for many years. They're not necessarily, and I do this a lot, you know, and you all know me. Um, you know, like you don't necessarily reach out all the time, but it doesn't mean you're not friends. Right. Because, um, you know, if you have a big yeah. circle of friends yeah. then you're not really necessarily talking to, like I talk to my mom on the phone every night. Okay. Um, almost every night, not every night. Um, it, oh, it's one of my sisters always does. Um, and so, you know, I don't always call all my friends all the time because mostly I'm just talking to my mom on the phone or my sisters. Mm -hmm. And, but anyway, um, people are under a lot of stress and to really not overreact to somebody else's stress as well. Yeah. I, I remember a, a phrase, uh, yeah. oh, hey, Ron. Uh, be kind, everyone you meet is facing a hard battle. Yep. And, yeah. and just to take that deep breath before you spew out your true, frank, unvarnished right. yep. feelings and say, wait right. a second, yep. where's that person coming, you know? Right, right. Somebody, that, yep. that person in the chat, uh, uh, running the, ch the, the cash register <laughs> at, at the Shaw's has yep. put up with a lot of people today. So yeah. Shut up. yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> funny because actually, one of our examples of like kind of tension with strangers. One of the typical examples in typical times is <laughs> the person who cuts ahead of you in the grocery store. Um, and yet now the grocery store is not just like, oh, how annoying! Someone was in the wrong checkout line. Like, oh, the grocery store is like the biggest thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I had some. Uh... COVID humor here. One, <laughs> one says, I'm so excited. It's time to take, 
take out the garbage. What should I wear? What should I wear? <laughs> yeah, I changed my outfit just for you guys because we've been together every day. <laughs> I have thought about that too. Am I gonna just put the same thing on? You've all seen me every day. Yeah, what are you? Who cares? <laughs> well, I pick a different t-shirt every day, so <laughs> thanks. But, but Alan still has that same uh, telephone uh, handset yeah. on. Yep. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Alan, Whatever what are you wearing? <laughs> Alan, what uh, are you wearing today? Alan, what are you wearing today, sir? I Okay. Bruins jersey. Bruins okay. okay. My hockey jersey. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a great picture with you and Dave Kaplan uh, standing next to Judy Hall's Island with your Bruins jersey on. Oh, yeah, that is good. That picture, mm -hmm. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. I back on those pictures when we're all together. And, and Alan, you, you almost, <laughs> Alan, you almost look like you you almost look like you like each other in the picture. I mean, it, 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 we're just seconds away from that moment. <laughs> My son oh, posted a picture you. yesterday on Facebook of him and one of his band members touching. He said, "Remember touching?" <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It's like it's like a it's becoming a special thing. Yeah. 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 It really is, yeah. It's funny how it I'm is. very struck by how timely Holy Week is for all of us, for the mm -hmm. whole world. Its message, yeah. I mean, it's 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 need, its language, um, uh, you know, the, the things that are happening each day, and the fact that you know Monday Thursday represents what it represents, and Good Friday represents what it does, and and here we are on Saturday. And uh, and it's sort of silent, quiet. I mean, I could not imagine what the first Saturday must have felt like. You know, just the sheer disorientation. Yeah. I mean, completely bl feel just feeling blindsided um. by by life and by everybody around. You know, and just not knowing what to do next, right? The bewilderment of the moment for those. And mm -hmm. uh, kind of, we kind of settle in that too. I feel, I feel a bit bewildered and like blindsided by all of this. Mm -hmm. And weren't they all still scattered at that point, do you think? On Saturday? Yeah, where have they come back together at that point? I wonder. The gospel, each gospel provides a different camera angle that has them going from to different, I mean, you know, others could give kind of more clarity. The gospel of Mark jumps, you know, obviously very sporadically it jumps to the three women, you know, Mary and then uh, the mother of Mary, the mother of Jesus and Salome. They, they go to the temple, uh, the temple early. It's, Saturday is pretty skipped. Yeah. Mm hmm but I wonder how long it took them before they finally regrouped. <laughs> yeah, because so, by the time uh, the woman came back, they, they came were back together. to where they had gathered, so we the know that. Yeah, yeah the, narrative picks up Sunday. the narrative picks up on Sunday. I mean, okay. even the ways the ways that the gospel letters are written is, is, is there's just not uh, something happens today. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, uh, Peter's letter, you know, first or second Peter talks about Jesus descending into Hades. There's a yeah. passages that some of you might be familiar with that reference this pretty yeah. mysterious day. Yeah. Like a spiritual work that we really don't know because yeah. there's that passage and we know it was something. Yeah. Yeah. But they wouldn't have traveled far because it was the Sabbath, so they just were kind of hanging around waiting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the reasons they had to leave Sunday morning to anoint Jesus' body is because they couldn't do it Saturday, right? So there was a limit. There was a pretty radical limitation. limitation yeah. I've been a bit amazed uh, lately. It seems like there's much more about Christianity on TV than there normally is. Hmm. They're constantly talking about churches not being able to meet. They'll interview pastors. Uh, yeah. Have religious programming. Uh, it's interesting. I, maybe I'm. You see it. Not seeing it, but it seems to me that you know you watch tele, 
you can look at television for weeks on end, you never see anything Christian on it. Um, yeah, no, it's something, right now it's something you can't take for granted, so it's on the news. Yeah, it's on the news much more today. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Both the good and the bad and the ugly of the Christian approaches to this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The news is uh, interesting, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, the churches that are still meeting. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're talking about the ugly churches, too. Yeah, but uh, basically it's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Last, <clears throat> last night we watched the, um, the Gospel of John on Netflix. Uh -huh. It just goes through word, you know, right from the Bible, but in the uh, action, there's action behind it. So it was well done. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, from, from the Middle East, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a version where every word of the Bible is spoken in the mm -hmm. process of the movie. Mm -hmm. I said a long time ago. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I have a reflection. Um, it's a newer one. It's like okay. 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which is. Go ahead, Jen. <laughs> I was just, this is jumping back a little bit, but I wanted to share. Um, so, you know, the um, passage from Acts when um, um, Peter is in jail and they're gathered at Mark's house to pray for his release. Mm -hmm. And then he's released from jail by a miracle by an angel so he comes to the house and rhoda opens the door and um runs upstairs and says it's peter at the door and they say it can't be peter at the door you know they've just been praying for his release and they say well it can't be peter at the door he's in jail and she says but it is so there's you know a considerable long delay where they leave him basically waiting by the door and um the, the grace with which he forgives rhoda reminds me of uh, when the woman came back, running back Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, when they came running back and Peter says, he can't possibly be, you can't possibly have seen Jesus. Um, that when, um, when Peter forgives Rhoda for leaving him at the door, he says, oh, it's okay. Um, I like to you remember that one time. <laughs> I never thought of those two stories together before that. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You know, it is it is relevant only on the topic of forgiveness um, for small and large things. Say, oh yeah, yeah, that happens. Sure. Do we have an hour? Okay. Should should we pray for that? Okay, maybe we should like pray for the rest of the time we have, just so we don't get cut off. Yeah. 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 Um, Anybody like to start and ride end? Okay. How's that? Does that sound all right? Sure. Let's pray. Uh, Father, um, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And Lord, um, this morning slash afternoon, we pray you would lead us not into evil, but deliver us from evil. Lord, thank you that we can talk about these things that can confuse us sometimes. Temptation um, and testing and trial. Uh, Lord, thank you for... Um, um, being with us in each and every one of those scenarios, uh, that we can even talk about them and discuss them, uh, knowing that we are clothed in your righteousness, that we are uh, covered by your blood, that we are okay. In your um, thank you for the freedom to discuss these things. Lead us into the temptation um, of, of fear, um, of bewilderment. Um, Lord, uh, help us to. Um, not be led into the uh, control. Um, uh, each and every day we have the choice to let go of that control. So Lord, even now as um, I'm praying, I'm just convicted of how often I cling. And so I pray um, for my heart and for all of ours that um, this Holy Saturday, we would to a, uh, an even a little greater degree let go. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Father, I just want to pray for Zoe and her mom and that you'll just um, help them at this time of uncertainty and and um, just as they go through this trial. And just mm -hmm. pray, pray for them. Mm -hmm. okay. Mary Tolbert as well, as she um, is uh, sort of waiting to see if, um, since her son uh, tested positive, waiting to see if she too is positive. Thank you that so far so good. She's not feeling uh, any side effects. Or um, So Lord, just uh, hold her heart and her spirits up during this time. Yes. Pray for Barbara Collins as well, who um, just really, um, Wants to be, wants to be with you, wants to be with your people, and and yet has a hard time. Uh, and uh, Lord, all the voices that are that are not from you, uh, the interruptions that are not from you, we just place it. Um, pray that she would um, be able to um, shut her ears to those, and uh, that this this. Uh, I guess this type of temptation or trial that she would come through it in flying colors. Um, Lord, I, I pray for myself that I'd be able to focus on, on what's really important and to really, um, really uh, step into what, what this weekend is, is all about um, in terms of just uh, your your redemption that you've turned everything ultimately around and that you're making it right with you and that we we have that very special thing to share lord we pray that we can um really be able to to speak of it uh to people who need to hear that it's in your name we pray amen father this is, this is very toughly the Christian word, but uh, take them away to do this as a sharing the word. I just pray God that you humble all of us to this. I know this week I've been humble because it is holy to me and you are holy word. I just pray God that we can all, all over the world to teach this whatever they can do. I just thank you, God, that we can still celebrate Holy Week over the phone, Lord, even though most of us can't see each other, Lord. I know the love is there. And I think you know you know. In the darkness in a more brilliant way than he normally does. We pray, Father, that we might have eyes to see who you are in all the things that we're involved in, so that we might see your plan as you are, no doubt, carrying it out in the midst of all this stuff that we're experiencing. Help us, Fathers, to somehow be in tune with what you're doing. Uh, in the midst of all the stuff that we are looking at in this crisis time. We believe, Father, you are accomplishing a, a unique thing in our culture and in ourselves during this period. And we pray that by your Holy Spirit, uh, your will would truly be accomplished in all of this. Our Father, we pray for we of little faith. It, just thinking about what the disciples were doing this Saturday, um, the wave had hit, but they didn't know whether it was going to be worse and worse, whether the authorities were going to come for them. Uh, they just didn't know. And uh, I think they must have been in a situation like we are. What's happening next? Uh, how bad will it be? Um, 
and yet they were just one day away from the proof of the triumph of Jesus. Um, that gives me comfort. We are, we are here anticipating, hoping, knowing that you will triumph. And we thank you for that. It's hard. It's hard. Um, but we have been taught and trained all of our lives, Lord. Um, give us that faith. We ask uh, for and tomorrow, um, their eyes will be opened a little more. We will see what you have for us and what we can do for others. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, great to be with you all. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, you will have a guided, well, it starts with Sunday school, 9 a.m., uh, Zoom call. Uh, an email just went out about an hour ago providing all the information, all this information, but um, yep. Sunday school begins at 9 a.m., guided worship at 10 a.m., uh, guided household worship. The, the welcome and the videos and the message and all that will release tomorrow morning. Um, you know? Uh, so, uh, so those will, those will, if you go on the page, you can access the page, but you can't get the videos, you know, until, until the morning, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. and then, uh, we'll do a little, you know, Facebook live until we figure out something better afterwards. And, uh, maybe an Easter egg hunt, maybe a little bingo. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see oh. how creative we can get. Um, yeah. we'll have, I got bingo. Yeah, you got, you like the idea of bingo, Alan? You know, because he's doing bingo out of their driveway in some town. The whole neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> really cool. We could do a church bingo game and you could do phone call bingo. I mean, you could do bingo on the phone, right? It's just, like, oh, yeah, I got that on my car. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, I think we're getting sidetracked. <laughs> That's okay. Doom is going to cut us yeah. off in the middle of it. So. I will. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But I'll turn on the um, Zoom at 8:45 tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, Tim. Uh, okay. You're welcome. That's you all. All right. You too. Bye. 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 Bye.